Righto then. Well, a few moments ago, the postman kindly delivered this. A Pine Phone Manjaro Community Edition, and this is the Convergence Edition. Now, you're going to have to probably excuse the overexcitement on my part, because I'm very, very hyped to have this, and I've probably wanted one all year. And I've decided that now is probably the time to get one before the price might increase for the retail version. And indeed, this is the Manjaro version. I've got no particularly strong feelings about Manjaro, but it seemed like one of the better Pine Phone operating systems, so I decided while these were in the EU, why not get one? So, as you can see here, we have the box for the Pine Phone. And I've got to say, Despite this being like a community device for developers and enthusiasts, it's actually a really nice box. It's got a really nice plastic wrap on it. It's got really nice artwork on the box and all that sort of thing. So with that said, let's go ahead and crack this thing open. Now, as I say, it's got a plastic wrap, so let's get the trusty key on it and see if we can get into it without damaging things too much. And there we go, we're in. Now. I actually don't really know what to expect in here, but I've seen a few unboxings, so I've got a pretty good idea. Let's just move that to one side and take a look at the box. As you can see, or maybe not from my camera, we've got all sorts of information about the phone on the side. It comes with a user manual, the Pine phone, a dock, because this is the Convergence Edition, and a USB power cable, which it's USB-C, that's really nice. We've got some more information on the side and we've got the Pine Phone Community Edition on the back. So without further ado, drum roll please, the moment we've all been waiting for, let's open this up. And we've got here a little bit of a sort of an introduction thing, if the camera will focus on it, which it will seem that it's not wanting to do that. Effectively, it's an introduction to the Pine Phone, which uh, tells you about Manjaro, tells you how to get started, and gives you some resources on Pine64. And the other side is blank. And there's also a user manual on here, which, go on, let's take a quick look at the user manual. Yeah, it would seem to be like a fairly vague user manual, kind of with a few odds and ends on it. Tells you how to take the back case off, gives you an initial setup, all that sort of thing. So let's just move that to the side and take a look at what we're really here for. So first up, we have the Pine Phone itself, which is sitting in a little plastic tray. Now, the corner of that is actually broke. That's slightly concerning. Let's just hope that it's not gone to the phone itself. Now, let's actually put the phone itself to the side for a second and just take a look at the boring stuff real quick. We've got here, if the camera will focus on it, a USB Type-C power cable. So let's just go ahead and break this out. Yeah, it's a fairly nice cable. It doesn't feel cheap. I've got no worries about this breaking. Um, there's no power brick, but let's be honest, you probably have one of those already, and if you don't, eh, plug it into your computer, it'll be fine. And next, we've got another quite exciting bit. We've got the dock to connect it to a monitor. And I've got to say, this is actually much sturdier built than I would have thought it would be. Like, this feels like, well, if it's not metal, it's some sort of very hefty material. And you've got a cool pine logo on here. I will actually probably use that uh, this, because that feels very nice. You've got two USB ports, HDMI, and Ethernet, so everything you need to use your Pine Phone as a tiny computer. Which I'm led to believe um, this thing's a little bit iffy as a phone at the moment, so that might be quite a good option. And here we go, we've got the Pine Phone itself. And I'm probably going to have to zoom out a little bit to get all of that in frame. But there you go, that's the Pine Phone. And you'll have to excuse how everything in shot is a mess. I was quite quick to want to record this. And I've got to say, I was thinking I wasn't going to like the Manjaro logo on the back, but that's actually very nice. It's quite tasteful. You've got the Pine logo up here. Yeah, it's a much bigger and heavier phone than I would have thought, but that's not a bad thing. This feels very, very well built for the price they're asking, which I think for the base edition is $150. So let's just go ahead and take the screen protector off. And there we go. Um, it seems to be like a little bit of a notch here, but I think that's just the screen protector. I don't think the phone itself has a notch. So before we go ahead and turn this off, let's just take the back off, which you do through a little catch there. 
Right, now I'm a bit hesitant to break this, but it doesn't seem to want to come off, so I guess it's on there quite well. Yeah, it might be that I have to stop the recording, take the back off, and then resume the recording again, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there we go, I got the back off. It didn't actually take very much doing. And I've got to say, it looks very nice inside as well. You've got all the kill switches up there if you want to turn all the sort of hardware features off. I don't think this is necessarily a phone for the super privacy conscious, but that might be a good option if that's what you're after. You got the SIM card tray and the micro SD card tray, and a removable battery. Now this actually looks like quite a large battery, which that's quite cool. And I've got to say, I really wish more modern phones would have removable batteries. And you can also see up here, we've got the 3 gigabytes of RAM and the 32 gigabyte eMMC. If you get the non-convergence edition, I believe it has 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of eMMC. And to be honest, I actually think for the price difference, even if you're not going to be using the convergence features, it's probably worth it to get this anyway for the higher end specs. So let's see if we can, I think we're going to have to take the battery out in order to get at that plastic tab. And I've got to say, I'm not quite sure how to get the battery out, because everything seems to be in there quite firmly. So I'm going to pull this back and see if I can get it out with two hands. I'll be back in a minute. And there we go. Plastic tab removed, and everything is in place. I've got to say, this is put together really well. Like, I don't worry about anything coming out when it really shouldn't. Like, everything is very sturdy. So let's just go ahead and put this back plate back on and see if we can turn the phone on, because it might very well need a bit of charging. And I've got to say, this clips together very nicely as well. It makes me wonder why more phones don't have removable backs. So here we go, let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it's got any charge left in it. And the answer to that is, yes, it would appear to have some charge in it. Or perhaps not. Right, well I will disappear for a second and see why it's not turning on. I'll be back in a minute. Right then, we're back and I think I've found the problem. Apparently, a certain number of these particular Pine phones from this batch actually shipped without an operating system, which is something that I read about on a forum a while ago, like the Pine phone official forum, which that's kind of the look of the draw that you take when you buy one of these things. You really want to kind of know what you're doing and know what to expect. So this really isn't a phone for the faint of heart, but if you're willing to mess with things, well, it might be a good idea. So with that said, I've gone ahead and written the newest version of Manjaro for the Pine Phone to a SD card, and we're going to try and boot from that. Now, it, that's not going to be ideal, the SD card isn't super fast, but it'll at least get us through this review until I can make a more substantial video on various Pine Phone topics. So with that said, let's go ahead and boot it up and see if it works this time. So it would seem to have seen my SD card, because it just vibrated. And that might actually be no. Oh, here we go. And there we go, we have the Manjaro logo. So this is full Manjaro running on a phone. Now to me, that is the coolest thing ever. So I don't know how long this will take to boot, but in theory, that might be it, maybe. It's definitely, well, it's definitely seen it and it's definitely working. Although that might have actually gone off, so we might need to plug it in, maybe. So I'm just going to go ahead and reach down and get my USB Type-C charger and see if that helps it along a little bit. Maybe it didn't have all that much battery out of the factory. So there we go, it's plugged in. Let's try that again. And like I say, there is like a certain amount of trial and error with these things, so... I'll kind of take you along for the ride, assuming the camera will focus. And for some reason it's not, oh, there we go. So I'm guessing it basically just checks the internal storage, then checks the SD card for an operating system, and I suppose it'll tell you if it finds anything. Because that little indicator went yellow, and now it's booting up. So once again, I have no, long, like, no idea how long I expect this to take, but I guess we'll just kind of see what happens. And that display does seem to still be on, so I think, and there we go. After all that trial and error, it's now booted. Now the camera is not the best, but I'm hoping that it'll pick almost everything up. So it's telling us to slide up to unlock. And there we go, that wasn't super instant, but I believe the default password is 
four, five, six. So very secure, clearly. And there's a little bit of a delay, so I think I'm gonna just kind of have to be a bit patient with it. And here we go. Now the first thing that I notice is the screen on this is actually very, very nice. Like it's an LCD, it's not AMOLED or anything fancy like that, but it does look nice. So now we've got like a little bit of a setup screen. Let's see if we can find English UK. And that keyboard is actually surprisingly responsive, so that's quite cool. All right, is it going to? Oh, yeah, let's let it uh, let us set it. So I'm going to turn off the automatic problem reporting, and I'm going to leave on the location services so I can test that later. Now here we go. We are in Manjaro, running on the Pine Phone. So I'm not going to go super in depth here because I'm going to probably make a more in depth video later, and I'm quite conscious that this is kind of getting long as it is. But I suppose I'll have like a little bit of a mess around with all this, see what everything is like, and then I will get back to you with a more full review. But my first impression is the screen is very nice, and there's not actually very much bezel, which is also very nice. Performance actually seems to be quite reasonable, like scrolling is fairly responsive. Let's open up an app and just see how long it takes. And considering that's running off a micro SD card, that was actually pretty fast. Everything seems responsive, the touchscreen seems to work. Uh, let's see if the volume control works. I'm not getting any indication that it is, but perhaps it is. Yes, yes it is. And let's see if we can turn the brightness up and down. Yes, we can. So, that's the Pine Phone. It seems like really cool and I can't wait to mess around with this more, but I think that's it for today's video. I'm quite conscious that it's getting a little bit long, so I will see you in the future for more Pine Phone related videos, hopefully. Thanks for watching.